So today's goal is to show off a little bit about Nanite in Unreal Engine 5 and how you can utilize the tools that they've given us um, to create Nanite assets fairly quickly and be able to utilize Nanite inside your own project. Now, first things first, when most people think about Nanite, they assume that it's going to be you know an object with millions of polys which would probably be hard to UV, has other issues like that within a workflow. Another method that I've seen less people talking about is to be able to utilize Nanite, especially within a indie game, like what I'm making, um, to improve what you have without actually adding a lot of extra work, right? So it would give you an option of a lower end, which might be this type of flat plane, now, depending on your game's art style, you might just want that. But say you wanted something more. Instead of, like, the first option would just be modeling it, of course. But then that's going to have its own unique UVs or, you know, like, there's ways around project, reprojecting it, all that, doing the UVs that way. One way, and this is how I initially started doing it, take a mesh. You could just, and this is what I've seen other people do, you subdivide it. And then maybe use a height map to, uh, you know, extrude it out, which is great. Here, I limited it to one direction uh, as an example, uh, which is great. This could work. That's fine. And that's the thing, too, is I'm going to show kind of the upsides and downsides here. But I wanted to show something that I've seen a little less people talking about, which is if we go into our static mesh editor, there's two different options we have here to create a nanite mesh. We can actually displace any mesh we bring in with a height map. So if we just under here, make sure we have Nanite enabled. The next step is we're gonna assign a texture. Let me grab a height texture. All this is is just a height texture that I've made in Substance Designer. So you might have a couple hundred meshes already ready in your game that utilize a trim sheet. And this is a way you could use Nanite still. All right, so I've added that nothing happened. Why is that? Uh, first things first, we need to tell it's a magnitude. Now, I set it to one, again, nothing's happened. This is something that will happen, is we're gonna need to just keep setting this. Okay, there we go. So 10, 14, that's a good number for this mesh. Okay, here I'm gonna assign the material so that we can see this a little better. Assign the material. One setting that I forgot to set to zero is this one. Trim relative error. Since that's been set to zero, it's the same as the magnitude not being set. Basically, it doesn't know how much to reduce this by. So instead of it becoming some random thing, uh, it's just gonna not work. So you need a number in here greater than zero. The smaller the number, the more dense the mesh it's gonna create. Since it's using the height map, we actually get full control over it. So I actually like this method a lot more than trying to model it if you're just using the height map. Uh, the issue then comes in the control you have over this, right? So you can see that the entire model got uh, displaced. Uh, it got displaced pretty well still, um, but you just didn't really have control over if you made it yourself. But if you have a lot of existing assets, uh, especially ones that use tiling texture or trim sheets, uh, this could be one that you could get a relatively good result from. This displacement works based on this right here this is the displacement uv channel so we could have created a uv channel just for what we want in displace because this is just an example i did not do that what i like about this is because we're using this relative trim error and it basically it calculates this based on the mesh size um we can actually create any density of a now there is another method to this um, right here. So this was one that was created and then exported. And the way that we created this is we had that existing asset, which is just that box that we're already using there. And then I have a high poly nanite mesh version of that asset. Now, you could use this to have two very different distinct nanite versus non-nanite meshes and then utilizing your material to change out things here i'm just using it to replace the same one 
So like say you want non-nanite users to have a very simplified mesh um, for that area, but if they're using nanite, say we replace it with a fancy statue, whatever, uh, we could use this. But also just overall, if we have a low res and a high res that match, we can actually just import the file. What I like about this is that it lets us keep the, again, keep that existing low LOD instead of relying on whatever the nanite fallback might might create. And yeah, that it, like to me, it works out perfectly for what I need. Uh, there is also a nanite displaced mesh plugin, which lets you create a displaced mesh. Like it's been buggy when I used it. Yeah, here's another example. Um, this is just the singular mesh for my trim sheet. Um, but I have other pieces like here. I've kind of cranked it up to way beyond absurd. Um, just because this is a very light the height map for it isn't very strong. Um, but you could tell so I could take these individual pieces if I wanted to uh, and set them up where now all of these meshes I've created that are using a trim sheet um, we could just we could just uh, apply the trim sheet here as a height map. Like say, uh, if we make the trim in designer, we would just, or anywhere where we bake out a height map, we would create the, let's say we make a floor out of a trim sheet. We would then just slap this displacement map on it and have that floor be displaced. Uh, that way we only still make that low poly version and it's a lot quicker to iterate on it's a lot quicker to iterate on than say you only had the high poly meshes and you're trying to create a floor out of just the high poly meshes, uh, which is something I've seen people be doing. It would be a lot easier just to use a trim sheet. So now we can do that. We can actually just use a trim sheet and then have Nanite enabled on it and it still look good and fit in with the rest of the Nanite assets rather than having to rely on creating it in that high poly form. Uh, anyways, hopefully I did a good job explaining uh, what I was uh, getting to there. Maybe you're not using Nanite and you were thinking about using it. Like, I hope to try. It. you should try it out at least. Um, especially if it's something like this where, like in my case, I already had a lot of existing assets. And the thought of using Nanite was very enticing. So this enables me to utilize it in a way that's smart. Oh, you know what? That's the ambient occlusion. No wonder the height doesn't. Didn't work that well. There we go. Hey, redeemed myself at the end there. All right, anyways, thanks for watching. If you made it this far and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, it really helps the channel out. Uh, and <laughs> I know I've been terrible about uploading videos, but I'm working on it. <laughs> no, um, thanks for watching.